Cardiovascular health refers to the strength of your heart in contracting, the efficiency of your blood vessels and your circulatory system to send oxygen and nutrients to the body. This is essential for well-being and day-to-day -day energy, but it's also crucial because having good cardiovascular health will protect you against diseases like heart disease, stroke, and the worsening of metabolic diseases. Given this is the number one killer worldwide, we really wanna think about cardiovascular health when we're protecting ourselves against mortality, but also thinking about longevity, generally speaking. Having good cardiovascular health means you have good energy, that you can get up and engage with your family in the way that you want to, and means that you can exercise and do all the things that you would like to do day to day. Longer term, it might impact, are you at risk for a heart attack, for a stroke, or for worsening metabolic diseases like diabetes, for example. The key markers for cardiovascular health include the lipid panel, which might include a total cholesterol, an LDL, an HDL, and a triglyceride level. I think ApoB is one of the most important markers that we can look at when we're thinking about cardiovascular health. It is more sensitive than any one of those individual lipid panel markers because it essentially collates the sum total of all atherogenic particles that may have impact to your blood vessels that can start an inflammatory cascade and lead to oxidative stress that will end you closer to a heart attack or some kind of heart disease situation. So with ApoB, I would, generally speaking, thinking about decreasing your consumption of saturated fat. So think about things like butter or ghee or higher fat cuts of meat. You might wanna think about minimizing those. I would also really consider how much sugar in the way of processed sugar or highly refined sugar you're consuming. These things can decrease your overall atherogenic load and be protective. I also would encourage people to exercise, and that could be both cardiovascular exercise as well as strength training. So exercise has a few effects. One, you're gonna help clear your, your lipids through the body when you're exercising more, but you're also increasing the fluidity, elasticity, and health of your vascular system. So you're less likely to be at risk when we're talking about little particles that attach and cause an inflammatory cascade. Atherogenic is maybe a fancy way of saying that there is a particle that has the ability to enter the blood vessel wall and start to destroy it such that your body's natural inflammatory response may kick in. And even though this might be favorable in the beginning, overall can create little plaques that eventually become blockages that could put you at risk for that coronary outcome or a stroke in the brain. So cholesterol is a fat, and when we think about putting fat into water, it tends to not work very well, right? It will not actually assimilate. So lipoproteins are basically little travel molecules for your fats that allow you to move those fats through parts of your body that are more water-soluble or more water-based so that we can transport those lipoproteins throughout your body. As much as we villainize cholesterol, it is absolutely essential for our function as humans. Cholesterol is the precursor to all the hormones that we have in our body. So we want a certain amount of it to be able to make estrogen and to make cortisol. We also need our cholesterol to support the membranes of our cells because when we've got good cholesterol, it means that our cells are pliable and they can move around and they are healthy. And we need cholesterol for our brain. So a lot of neurotransmission is dependent on having enough fat in the brain to be able to do that. So these are all good things and we want a base level of cholesterol to be able to support our function and vitality. Excess cholesterol may mean that that cholesterol ends up in your blood vessels. And when cholesterol ends up in your blood vessels, especially certain types of cholesterol, they can start a destructive campaign in that blood vessel and essentially put you in a place where you may develop plaques that turn into clots, that turn into coronary disease or strokes. It's a great question to think about the role of dietary cholesterol and our cholesterol overall. We used to historically think that this was a big deal and you probably heard at some point, we should never eat eggs because it's really problematic for your health. But in fact, dietary cholesterol has a very limited role on what happens with the cholesterol in your body. Saturated fat, however, does play a role. 
Saturated fat is gonna be more incorporated into the whole kind of movement of fat in your body into these lipoproteins that can then be more destructive when we're talking about blood vessels and overall cardiovascular health. The key dietary changes you can make if you have a bad cholesterol reading is number one, be mindful about saturated fat. So here we're thinking about fattier cuts of meat, ghee, butter, so this is really important. Number two, I would think about movement and exercise. And this can be a combination of cardiovascular exercise and strength training as we're improving the strength of our cardiovascular health as we're moving. I would also really push forward fiber. All kinds of fiber is good to help bind cholesterol in the gut and help you eliminate it. And finally, I do think that stress reduction and sleep has an important role in your overall cardiovascular health. HSCRP stands for highly sensitive C-reactive protein. It is one of the most important markers when we're thinking about how to assess systemic inflammation. So that means inflammation throughout the body. In acute waves, HSCRP may elevate and be totally normal and expected. But when HSCRP is chronically elevated, this puts us at risk against all causes of mortality, but certainly specifically around cardiovascular disease. Lipoprotein little a or LP little a is a marker that is very genetically determined. So here we are going to find out how at risk is someone without thinking about their lifestyle or nutrition. It's just a marker that tells us how likely is someone to clot or not. This is very important to know when you're thinking about your cardiovascular risk, because if you're somebody who has an elevated LP little a, you might want to have a more aggressive approach to managing your cardiovascular risk. As you improve your overall cholesterol panel by exercising, eating well, you can see some improvements in your LP little a. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein. Generally speaking, this is a more favorable marker. It tends to track with better outcomes when we're talking about cardiovascular health. So higher levels here are gonna be more desirable. You can actually increase your HDL by thinking about consuming more monounsaturated fats, which you may find in avocados and some nuts and seeds. HDL is essentially clearing excess lipids from the body and helping them to be removed. Triglycerides are a very special kind of fat. They're a storage form of fat. So typically speaking, we're gonna have higher triglycerides when there might be excess calories around and specifically more sugar-based calories. We really think about triglycerides because they tend to track with things like insulin resistance and so can kind of be another marker to think about metabolic health specifically. So one way that I would recommend people improving their triglycerides is to exercise, to limit their consumption of highly processed sugar, to decrease their fructose. Those would be my top ways to think about supporting your triglycerides. So improving LDL would be in some ways similar to how you improve ApoB overall. So you would wanna think about decreasing your consumption of saturated fats, getting exercise, eating nutrient-dense foods that are balanced as far as sugar, protein, and fat goes. HSCRP, as a reminder, is a systemic inflammation marker. So there are many things that may drive inflammation, stress, poor food, metabolic dysfunction. So sometimes we just have to think in a, in a very broad way, how can we improve this? But generally speaking, eating a well-balanced diet, sleeping well, getting good exercise and managing your stress, those are probably four very clear and uh, essential ways to support your HSCRP. Sleep and stress, I would say, through that mechanism of inflammation, have a big role in your cholesterol. So the more that you have you know, poor sleep and elevated stress, you may have higher levels of cortisol, which then impact inflammation, which have a negative impact on your lipids. Triglycerides are actually a specialized kind of storage fat, so they may be elevated more in a situation where someone is consuming excess calories, specifically processed sugar, highly refined sugar, and it ends up getting stored in the liver as a backup reserve of energy. Unfortunately, this can be particularly inflammatory and problematic for cardiovascular health. HDL stands for high density lipoprotein, and this is a marker that tells us how well is cholesterol being removed from the body. So you would want more of this, right? Because if we're taking away cholesterol, this is positive overall when we're thinking about cardiovascular health. So higher levels here are more favorable for health. 
So LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. Interestingly, it is a type of ApoB lipoprotein, and it tends to be more collecting of cholesterol. So this is gonna lead to the cholesterol that stays in the body, but also is able to enter into the vessel wall and create damage that can start a cascade towards disease.